the, if you pronounce it incorrectly, it can sound like other words, you know, so that when you use this expression, used to, you want to make sure you enunciate it. Used, da. It ends with a D. You, used, da. Used. And then you say it quickly, used. But it has to have that D sound at the end of it. Used. 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 Good. Used. Used to. Now, we can use that, those words, used to, to mean different things, depending upon the context of the sentence. In other words, how the, how the words are used in the sentence, the words around them. So, let me show you all of the ways we can use used to. We say used to to talk about events, something that happened in the past. Now, I'm going to show you an examples. We talk about a past situation or a, maybe a habit that we've had that we no longer have. So we're talking about an event or something that has happened in the past. You will also see just use, no D on the end of it, use to, use to. We use that instead of this when we are asking a question about something that happened in the past. And I'll show you some examples. Did you, this is a question, right? See the question mark? Did you use, use to play a musical instrument? Yes, I used to play the piano. So we just say use to only if it's in a question. And we use used to when we're making a statement about something that's happened in the past. Um, I live in Indiana in the USA now. I used to live, I used to live in Georgia. And before I lived in Georgia, I used to live in California. And before I lived in California, I used to live in Chicago. I'm telling you where I lived in the past, used to. Um, let's try a practice here. So, which one will we put here? Use. Nope. No e. Be because it's a question. It's a question. Did you use to live in Cambodia? No. I never lived in Cambodia, but I used to live in Vietnam. Yeah. Used, used with a D, work at a hotel. Did you use to? Yeah, okay, perfect. You are a brilliant class. A brilliant class. Now, you can also use used to to mean the same thing as ever been. Used to and ever been can mean the same thing. So we can say, did you, or used to, not used to. Did you used to be a chef? It's the same thing as saying, have you ever been a chef? Same thing, same thing. So if we go back here, it would be just as correct to say, have you ever been a chef? Have you ever, uh, have you ever lived in uh, Cambodia? But same thing. Now, another use for used to. We can say used with a D, used to, can mean accustomed to. 
uh, an example. You know what I mean by accustomed to? I am used to waking early in the morning. I am accustomed to waking early in the morning. That's my habit, to wake early in the morning. I am not used to hot weather. Bangkok is hotter than the climate I am used to. I'm not accustomed to that. So used to can mean accustomed to. So far so good? Teacher, how we know when we use use to, when we use accustomed to? Well, they're interchangeable. Oh. They're interchangeable. I could, I could just as easily say, it would be just as correct, Nat, to say, I am accustomed to waking early in the morning. I am used to waking early in the morning. Same meaning, both just as correct. Can you substitute? But, but let, me, let, me, let me continue, please. Uh, if I say I am accustomed to waking early in the morning, that's considered more formal speech. But if I say I am used to waking in the morning, that's more informal speech. So it's a, it's a matter of one being more formal than another. Um, if I say I am accustomed to waking in the morning, um, that's not how I would speak in normal conversation. It's a little too, I might say that in writing, but I wouldn't say it in normal conversation. The more, the more um, normal way of saying it, the typical way of saying it would, would be, I am used to waking early in the morning. One is more informal than the other. That's the difference. But they mean the same thing. You mean the same thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Different formal and informal way. Yeah. Used to is more, it's more informal, informal. Than, than accustomed to. Now we can also use the very same set of words, used to, to tell us the purpose of something. Purpose. And it, it's a completely different meaning. So I can say, the broom is used to sweep the floor. You see how that meaning is different? The broom is used to sweep the floor. We're using used to to tell us what the purpose of the broom is. So it is the context of the sentence that tells us the meaning of these two words. One of the things that, that, is, that, that is very unique, or I should say one of the, 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 the main differences between Thai and English is that in, in Thai, you change the meaning of words by changing the pitch. In English, we change the meaning of words, the, the, the meaning of words is changed by the, what we call the context, the words that, that are used in the rest of the sentence. So the fact that we're talking about a broom sweeping the floor tells us that used to is referring to the purpose of the broom. The fact that I'm talking about waking in the morning tells us that used to is referring to a habit that I have. And in this case, used to is referring to about something that happened in the past because of the context. So context, you know, in order to understand the meaning of a word, you have to also comprehend the whole sentence. And, and what's helpful is that sometimes you can guess the meaning of a word just by knowing what else is said in the sentence. Because here,
you can, you can grasp, you can comprehend the meaning of this sentence even though it's missing one of the words, can't you? You see? You, 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 you know what's being said, even, even though there's a missing word, a missing phrase, you can still figure out what that, what that sentence says because you have context. And con that context is very, very important in, in reading comprehension and listening comprehension. I was asking directions the other day and I mean, I'm clueless. I, I don't I understand very, hardly any tie at all. But I was asking directions. And so a person is being very, very helpful trying to, to, to tell me directions. And he was speaking, and I didn't know the words that he was using, but he was pointing. So I could tell by another symbol, his pointing, what the word that he was saying meant. That's what we refer to as, as context, as using one word or several words or symbols to tell what something else means. And when we read, or also when we listen, we have to listen to the whole thing to, to get the meaning of just, you know, individual words.